We're going to have creamy red chili enchiladas tonight with butternut squash. Yum. I made tacos last night, like quick tacos. Well, quick for me. We had all this taco meat left over. And I made this taco meat with like green lentils and red chili and potatoes, like all kinds of stuff. It is really, really good. But we have leftovers. And I was thinking about making nachos or something with them tonight. But then I thought, you know, I've got all the ingredients for enchiladas and I have some red chili paws from New Mexico, some veggies in the freezer, unflavored yogurt so I can even make a little cheese sauce, cashews to make a creamy red chili sauce. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I could use a yogurt for to make a creamy red chili sauce too. I just, but I don't have a lot of anything so I kind of have to combine <laughs> ingredients. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's a totally impromptu, but I will leave a recipe in the description box that will give you my basic taco meat recipe out of lentils. Of course, I'm always being a little creative here and there, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave a basic recipe and you know with substitution notes as well and also it will be a link actually to my substack we'll have the lentils the, the lentil taco meat basic cheese sauce and the red chili sauce that we're gonna make i'm gonna make it creamy we're, that's why we're gonna use the cashews i know red chilies from new mexico are not really easy to come by but you have a lot of options like you can use chipotle you know just get one of those cans of chipotle i got one so you can use like this. You'll have to pull out the chilies and chop them up a bit. Or this is already done for you. This is already prepared. And you're only gonna need a couple of tablespoons to get enough spice. Now I'm using about nine red chili pods. They're hot, but they're not as hot as jalapenos. The jalapenos are, which chipotles are smoked jalapenos. Jalapenos are way hotter, way up there on the Scoville chart. Even if you don't have Chipotle or if you don't like Chipotle because it has a little like sweetness to it, you can go to Walmart and like hit up the like international section and get like California chili pods, japones. These are hot. These are very spicy. Guajillo is another one um, and you can kind of mix them up. So I like to mix up three California, three guajillo and three japones. And it would be good and spicy, but not too spicy. We're gonna roast our red chilies. You would do this with the guajillo and the japones and California chilies as well. And you just wanna put them on like a medium high heat and maybe get a tool so you don't burn your fingers. Ah! Okay. Old tool. Kind of move it around a little bit. This is how I know when they're ready. They get softer and it smells right. It almost smells chocolatey. Okay, here we go. We get a little clumsiness. We used to live in New Mexico, so that's why you'll see a lot of like New Mexico inspired dishes on this channel. Okay. This is good. It's, you don't need to do it for very long. Just, you just want that, just when it starts to smell. <laughs> really good. And then you wanna take it off. I only have about this much cashews. It's about a quarter of a cup. We'll throw in a half a cup. And these need to soak. This recipe calls for about a cup of water to start. So we'll throw, throw that in there. We just need to take the stems off the red chilies because we're gonna soak these too. I don't even like take the seeds out because they're gonna come out in the soak, soaking because we're gonna soak these and then we're gonna drain them and then most of the seeds will come out after that. Okay, we're just gonna let everything soak for about 20 minutes. We only need about half 
this onion. So this is on medium, we're gonna do medium. We're gonna let it dry up and then get hot and then put a little bit of olive oil. I'm using avocado oil actually. I've been using avocado oil lately because olive oil has just been so expensive. So this has been much more affordable. Tablespoon. Pretty hot. Gonna light it up on that heat. I'll throw a little cumin in it. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. It's not very traditional New Mexico style to do cumin, but I like it. It's more Tex-Mex style. And you wanna bloom the cumin in your oil. It brings out lots of flavor. And this sauce is actually pretty simple. I mean, like traditionally, an authentic New Mexico style red chili sauce is just red chilies, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, water, maybe some flour, maybe some lard, maybe some oregano. Waha, oregano. A little bit of oregano in here. Turn it off, it's cooked enough. Deglaze it a little bit. So if you're making a authentic New Mexico style, you would actually have a quarter cup of oil or lard or butter, about three tablespoons of flour, and you would do that. But we're gonna be using tapioca starch instead, and we don't have to make a roux with that. It saves us in terms of fat and calories. So we're gonna drain our cashews. Just put them right back in there. Drain our chilies. Put them in the blender. Throw in about, it's about half of this. It's about a quarter cup, a quarter cup of tapioca. About a cup of water. It's better than bouillon. Um, it's not chicken. It's like a no chicken base. So I'm putting about this much. I think that's a teaspoon into our blender. And one of the reasons why you can, you don't have to use bouillon. You don't, you could just use salt, but I am actually out of salt. So we're using salty things. Our onion and our garlic. We're just gonna water and all. Cause it's okay if we put, like I said, too much water cause we're just gonna cook it down. And I probably will need more water cause we did put a lot of tapioca starch in there. I want this to be creamy and actually almost like the consistency of cheese. I want the overall effect to be kind of a, like that there's cheese actually in the red chili sauce as well. So we're kind of making a cheesy, creamy red chili sauce. And then we're gonna make kind of a cheese sauce to go over it. And you don't actually have to do that. Uh, I'm doing it for pretty, just so that it's not just like a red surface, so that there's like something drizzled over it. It makes it prettier. <laughs> and it's good that way too. It, it'll be good because we're doing some extra special cheesy stuff to the actual cheese sauce. So yes, there's gonna be additional flavor, but if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to do it. Or you could just actually drizzle just like some, some yogurt on it. You can actually even add a little lemon juice to this and maybe a little salt or just lemon juice and make it like sour cream. Like you could do so many things. There's so much freedom here. <laughs> you can do so many things. I'm gonna go blend this. You don't need to see it. Mm, it smells so good. Okay, let's put it in our pan. We're gonna cook it. Throw this back in here. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Good. It's a little gritty because it, it needed to soak a little bit more. 
but that's okay because we're gonna cook that grit, grittiness out of it. So I'm pouring some water, just to make sure I have some water ready just in case it gets too thick. Isn't that a beautiful color? I thought I was gonna use spinach and butternut squash, but we're out of frozen spinach and I don't have any greens in the fridge. We are gonna be using frozen butternut squash. Don't worry about frozen veggies. They're usually flash frozen just when they're picked and they're picked ripe and they're typically delicious and more nutritious than what you see in the produce section and they tend to be less expensive. I love frozen fruit. You should see how much frozen fruit I have. Do you see how this is like cheesy? Look at that. Ah, the power of tapioca starch. I'm going to mix some of this with this. I need to get rid of our plastic containers because they probably, I got them from, from a thrift store. And you know what? They probably have BPA. So good. Um, I'm gonna rinse this, and then we're gonna start on our cheese sauce. When I make the cheese sauce, I use kimchi. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. Kimchi is lacto-fermented, so it has lactic acid. Like, it gives it a cheesy tang flavor. It's just so much heavy lifting. <laughs> like there's so many ingredients that I don't need to add to make this cheese sauce because they're in the kimchi. There's garlic, there's onion, red pepper, obviously. Makes it look a little bit more queso-like. I don't really need to add much to this. I'm gonna put in about a cup of yogurt. This also gives it kind of a cheesy flavor because Forager Project is culture. So we got the, all those cultured flavors. I'm gonna put in, how much of this? Probably about a couple tablespoons. Yeah, this will be a little, I'd say that's a quarter of a cup. Some juice. Given that I have only a little bit of miso left over and no salt, I will use all of this. This will be the saltiness of it. Miso is great because it doesn't lower, it doesn't raise your blood pressure like salt does. And we'll throw in the rest of our tapioca starch, which is a quarter of a cup. And then I will put about a cup of soy milk. This is unflavored, unsweetened, unsalted, very basic soy milk. I may need to up the tartness level, but I don't know until we taste it, so we'll see. And if I do need to do that, it would just be a squeeze of lemon juice or a little apple cider vinegar. I'm not gonna do more kimchi because I don't want it to taste just like kimchi. <laughs> um, and if you don't have kimchi, you can use sauerkraut or experiment with other fermented things. Like you can ferment carrots for this, get a very orange cheese. Okay, I'm gonna mend this. Oh well, we're gonna do the use a big burner. <laughs> we'll just put it on low. If you're using the big burner, put the heat on pretty low. Definitely is gonna need a little tank, so if you want too much, just maybe a capful, half a capful of apple cider vinegar. There's a little bit of a kimchi flavor. I could have gone a little lighter on the kimchi, but it's so tasty. And it will go well with everything. Okay, take this off. Put it aside. Taking some of this sauce out because I want to use this pan to layer our enchiladas. It's like a flat enchilada casserole. That's what it really is. And then I want to use the rest of this down here as the bottom layer. We're going to assemble. Ooh. We are not frying tortillas because we don't want it to be too fatting. It's too fattening. And I'm just using a cast iron pan because it's, I don't know how big this one is, 12 inches or something? Because it's just the two of us. This will give us dinner tonight and leftovers another night, which is nice. Have fun with your food. Make sure it's cool enough to handle. Okay. 
Okay. So. Oh, it's ripping. That's okay, though. It's okay if it rips. Oh, you might want to spray some oil at the bottom of the pan if it's not seasoned very well. If you're using another kind of pan, like a casserole dish. All right, well, I'm gonna clean up this mess and in about a half an hour, I will be back to tell you how it tastes. Okay, so it's been in there for about 25 minutes. Looks pretty good, huh? I'm actually gonna broil it a little bit. Oh, I can't hold him. <laughs> My wrist is breaking. I'm gonna broil it for a few minutes, just to let it kind of brown. And then I'm gonna go for a walk and play with my dogs and let it cool. <laughs> Okay, my battery ran out. <laughs> I had to change it. Well, I was not paying attention to the broiler. Hopefully I didn't burn it. Okay. Oh, that looks so amazing. The reason why I wanted to brown this is I just want to make sure that the cheese kind of sets too. But isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's so heavy. There's a little, so much food in this. Wow. I wish I had cilantro, but no cilantro because I just made it with what I have on hand. And it's been a few days since I've gone to the grocery store. I always get cilantro at the grocery store, but it's all out. Because we cook a lot of Mexican or Middle Eastern style styles of food um, heavy on cilantro. <laughs> you got a ball. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. So good. Yum. Oh, this is so good. The sweetness from the butternut squash is a nice little surprise and it contrasts so well with the tang of the cheesiness and the chili. It's super good. I don't want to eat this all. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, yeah, we're gonna eat this. Thank you so much for joining me today. And make sure to go click that link down in the description box below. It will take you to this recipe and to my newsletter. And while you're there, subscribe. So good.